first off, thank you guys for tuning in. I know it's been a while since I've updated and I've just been heads down with code and some different builds, but I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, share an update as it relates to the DJI SDK and uh, a problem that I've run into with uh, one of the examples. Now, most recently, we're doing testing for various hardware in hopes that the Mavic Mini SDK will be released soon. And the main thing we're focused on is the virtual stick uh, API, which allows you to move the aircraft as though you were controlling it with the physical sticks. And that's why they call it the virtual sticks API. But the problem is in my testing ran into an issue where I almost crashed a spark in the garage. This is the demo code that DJI puts out. And let's just take a look at the uh, problem area. So there's a method here that allows us to set the X velocity and the Y velocity. This is our roll in our pitch. And those values are actually incorrect. So if you're using the app and you're testing it, uh, you're going to run into problems. You're going to, basically everything is inverted. And the speed for this uh, demonstration app is, is, is really high. And if we take a look at these values, you can see the X and Y are multiplied by 15. Those get set down in here for the pitch and roll. And if we look at those, we can see that this is the uh, meters per second along the Y axis and along the x-axis. So that's actually pretty fast to take that value and multiply it by 15. So we're going to slow it down. I'll do a quick demonstration of how this app operates out of the box. So I have Spark powered up, have my remote connected to Spark. Now let me just do a quick test to make sure that I can arm. So that looks good. Now, if you're not familiar with the DJI SDK, in the case of Spark, is that the remote broadcasts a Wi-Fi network. So we'll connect to the remote with our app. In my case, it's running on the iPad. Now, you can connect directly to Spark, but normally for testing, we just use the remote. That makes things a lot easier if we want to take control. iPad is connected to the Spark remote. You can see the model there. I'll click open. Now, this is the problem that we had before. I'll try to demonstrate once we're in the air. So the default DJI SDK code for the simulator is incorrect. You'll see that the roll and pitch is really out of whack. It almost caused me to crash initially. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and initiate the takeoff command. It says success. So we've taken off to the default altitude. And then what we'll need to do is there is what's known as the virtual stick control. I'll go ahead and enter that mode. And now let's just demonstrate the yaw command. It's sort of hard to not adjust the altitude or the throttle as well. But you can see everything is working fine. I'm able to yaw. Now the problem lies in the pitch and roll. So I'm not going to get too aggressive with this, but you can see if I go right, it's actually going left. If I go left, it's going right. And then if I go forward, it's coming back. So everything is pretty much inverted here. So let me go ahead and just exit virtual stick control. And then I can issue the land command. So that's definitely not what we wanted. And let me just demonstrate the simple changes that I've made to the app to make sure everything works correctly. We've switched these direction.x and direction.y variables around. And I'm also going to change the multiplier to one. We could actually just remove this all together, but we'll leave that so we can experiment with it in the future if we want to speed it up a little bit. Let me just build it real quick for iPhone. Basically checks for the connection status and then we can open it. So that all looks good. And before I cut to demonstrating how this update performs, which uh, performs as you would expect, I also want to just share the uh, code with you. This is a fork of the iOS simulator demo and the changes that I made. The red is obviously the original, the green are the changes that I've made. I've committed that. I'll put a link to this below. It's, I realize this is a super simple change, but it makes all the difference in the world 
when you're testing and let's take a look to see how it performs now. Once again, we've updated the X and Y axis so everything should work well with the pitch and roll and I've slowed down the velocity uh, a considerable amount just so that we're able to test indoors and not have to worry about flying too fast and running into anything. So we're going to go ahead and open the app. We'll issue the takeoff command. Okay, we're going to enter the virtual stick control mode and I'll just hop directly to the roll in the pitch. And so now we can see I'm able to, let me fix the yaw a little bit. And let me just uh, sort of loop around the garage. Hopefully you can see me going right, gonna come back. I'll just, you can tell that uh, this flight control mode is actually pretty precise. You have a lot of good control, super responsive. Now let me go ahead and land. So I just wanted to share that. It's uh, really surprising to me that DJI would roll this out and anyone that has tested would know immediately that it's not working correctly. It's actually uh, pretty dangerous and could cause harm to your aircraft. So really excited about the virtual stick control. A lot of what we've done in the past is waypoint based and knowing that there could be SDK support for Mavic Mini coming soon. Uh, a lot of this will be applicable to that aircraft too. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I know it's been a while since I've updated and I just appreciate you guys following along, still commenting. I promise to uh, post more and until next time, thanks for watching.